All right, this is Steve Lang, and I'm with the uh, Kansas Jayhawk Rugby Football Club's Old Boy Quarterly, and today I am doing an interview with assistant coach um, Andy Stewart, and I have been very impressed with the um, way he has kept his players uh, involved with the team during this very long layoff because of the COVID-19. Uh, they haven't they haven't been together since uh, mid March, and he's been sending out these great emails. And so we're going to talk about what's in those emails that is so impressive. So, hello, Andy. Hey, Steve. Good to be with you, mate. Yes. All right. So um, uh, let's go back on on April sixth. You gave him. You're giving him assignments, and uh, just kind of talk about your your your. What, what, what you're doing. Yeah, so I guess um, for us, obviously, thrown into a pretty uh, strange situation, as everyone has been. But, you know, with rugby, we were we were on the precipice of, uh, well, we certainly would have won the, um, won the Heart of America um, college conference. Which would, you know, that would have been awesome. It looked like we would have gone through undefeated. And then on to the national championships, but obviously that all fell off the cliff when COVID happened. So... Um, rather than sitting idle, Matt and I got together and we decided uh, let's make an opportunity out of this um, problem and let's engage with our players and use the time wisely to uh, educate them around uh, more around rugby IQ, um, which we, we discussed it had two, a twofold effect. One is that it, it does just that. It hopefully increases the boys, um, you know, rugby smarts um, through a series of assignments and activities, but also just takes their mind off um, what's going on in the world, which I think is really important at the moment. We know, um, you know, we've got some terrific young men and we need to take care of those fellas, and, and part of this was just an engagement piece uh, to keep them part of the club and the club spirit alive, even though we can't... Um, you know, be together one on one. Okay. Well, you've got you've got the ability now because of uh, a gift from uh, the parents, uh, particularly one parent of one of the players, gave you the ability to record games and and you can uh, put those things out on a on a, a podcast, I guess, where people have a password and can go in and watch the game. And you tell them at particular minute points in the game to take a look at what happened. That, that changed the course of the game, and then you ask for feedback from the players to tell you what they saw. Correct? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a hundred percent. That's right. We're, we're we're like super fortunate to have uh, such a supportive group of uh, parents and alumni that we have been able to afford to get um, the film equipment we have and the huddle. Uh, subscription that we use to share those videos uh, with the players and help them with their own personal game by focusing on some some detail that gets missed when you're a player, right? When you're out on the field, you you know you're often working uh, as hard as you can, and you can't actually see what what else is around you a lot of the time. And this just gives us an opportunity to say, hey guys. You know, keep your eyes up and look for these situations and these game-changing moments where we can actually uh, change momentum in rugby because that's that's what wins you the game. You know, the the good teams you see playing, it's like the entire fifteen on the field all has one mental picture of what's going on in the game, and they all know where they're all supposed to be so they can take part in what's going to happen next. And that, that's something that I've, very, very, I've been very impressed that you have, uh, you and Matt and the rest of the, and the, uh, and the staff have uh, coached. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about Rugby IQ? We put it in the Old Boy Quarterly a couple of episodes ago, or editions ago, and, and I thought that the way you explained Rugby IQ was uh, so spot on. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a way of managing the game. So, it, it, you know, rugby, a lot of it is fitness, a lot of it is strength, and a lot of it is skill. But if you can um, wrap that up in game management, uh, that's when you really start uh, dominating teams and competitions because the, the whole team basically has a plan and 
you go out to execute that plan, um, and when things go right, it's awesome, then it flows. When things go wrong, well, then you've got plan B to manage your way out of that. So that's that's kind of where we're headed with the team. We're trying to we're trying to create an understanding that when we're under pressure, we you know, and I, I say this to the boys all the time, when we're in defence, we only need to last for one minute in defence on average. One minute in defence will turn the ball over back to us. So, I, you know, we talk about rugby IQ. You've got to realise that moment and say to yourself, well, we just have to defend hard here for a minute. We've got to get up off the floor as quickly as we can. We've only got to do this for 60 seconds, and on average we will get the ball back. Um, and then, you know, we talk a lot about percentage plays. And I'm sure there's uh, similar nomenclature in um, American football and, and basketball as well. But it's about what is going to reap you, what has the most chance of reaping you the best result, which is points. Um, so, you know, we like to play our rugby in what we call the red zone or the strike zone where we can score from. We've, we've got a lot of trust in our systems, which are our line-out scrums. So we need to bank on ourselves um, getting down into a position to score and then turning the ball over or having one of these, what I what I call them, that, you know, in the team we talk about these game-changing moments. And that's where we get ourselves into a position where we can turn the ball over, whether that's through a uh, super effective tackle, whether it's through holding up the mall or whether it's through um, jackling or pilfering the ball on the deck. But uh, we teach patience with that as well. So, uh, you know, again, it's just, just about knowing where you are on the field and where you've got the most uh, likelihood of scoring and then trying to exploit that. Excellent. Um, one of the other things you've done besides being able to show past KU games and seeing the so the players can see themselves and how they move around. You've also had pro games and have even had pro players come on your Zoom calls, which I was very impressed with. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, we, I mean, um, the, the pro games and stuff, it's great for us to see um, what, you know, the MLR teams, but even the super rugby teams, uh, from the Southern Hemisphere and even some of the international teams, what they're doing on the park and drawing parallels to what we're doing. So some of the attacking systems that we use, you can see those patterns of play across all those competitions, which is awesome for the boys to see because then they realise, you know, I'm not that far, we're not that far away from what those professional teams are doing. So off the back of that, I mean, we're very fortunate um, to have Matt Harmon playing in the MLR, who's an old boy of the Jayhawks and he's, he's so generous with his time and he came onto one of the Zoom calls and we just basically had that conversation around, you know, what do you guys do in the MLR? What's your average week like? What is your game week like? And, you know, how many lifts are you doing and all that sort of stuff? And then we talked about what we were doing and the two things weren't, uh, you know, the two systems weren't that far apart Which and the guys that were on the call, I think it was like a light bulb moment where they they thought, wow, we're, you know, we're, we're heading in the same direction. And it gives guys confidence that if they want to go to that next level, that they'll understand the kind of systems that they're talking about. So having Matt Harmon on um, a month or so ago was awesome. He was terrific. He's an entertaining guy. Um, anyway, so that was terrific. And then last uh, week or the week before, we had um, two uh, professionals um, who both played in Ireland and for Canucks and um, uh, Targ Le- Leader is now playing in the MLR for the Free Jacks and um, Dara is still playing for Canucks and just to have those guys on and, and talking about you know disciplines and um, how you execute in the game and just talking about some of their, their best moments and that sort of stuff you know it just gives the guys a little a uh, little contact point for when for when they want to, you know, if they want to go to that next level, I don't want them to, to think that it's unattainable and these, these players that, that play at MLR level are, you know, that much better than them. I think, you know, the skills that we're coaching now and that the guys are learning is right up there. It's up to those, to the players now. If they want to go to the next level, all they've got to do is work on um, skills and fitness. So, um, 
Yes, and we actually had one of our guys tender into the draft this year, which was great. Uh, he didn't get picked up, but, you know, he was certainly considered because he, he received some correspondence from the MLR about it. So he keeps working hard over the next couple of years, playing a bit of club footy. He was a senior, so playing a bit of club footy. You never know what's going to happen off the back of that. So. One thing that, that's, that's part of this is that's, that's so good for the game, so good for the high school level, and so good for, um, frankly, recruiting for the Jayhawks, is that you've included um, some Kansas City area high school coaches on some of your calls and invited high school players to join you, along with the Jayhawks that are, that are, that are tuning in. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so, you know, we talk in Australia, we, we, our club is only as strong as our grassroots. So when we, when we look at our club system back home, we put a lot of focus into our 7 to 18-year-old players because that's your feeding ground for uh, your senior competition. And this is the connection that we need to make with these high schools um, in the area that, you know, we need to show them that they can continue their rugby career, um, that we have a really good club, number one, um, we have good personnel. We have awesome facilities. You know, we've got the best facilities without doubt um, in this whole heart competition, if not even broader. So we we really want to engage with them as early as possible uh, so that we can start to show them how good it is to become a Jayhawk. So, yeah, including those, those um, younger players into it, I think is really important. And, again, it's just a, it's that connection point, Steve, where you, where you realise, even as maybe a 15 or 16-year-old, that the steps to get to the pinnacle of rugby is actually, there's a pathway. It's not, it's not luck. There's actually a way that we can manage it so that there is a pathway through. Um, so that was, that's kind of the, the idea behind it. Um, and I hope those guys take the opportunity to, to um, you know, stay engaged with us uh, on an ongoing level and, you know, the coaches there as well. We, I mean, we, we actually had this year planned to do some high school games and have um, some workshops and things like that with some local high schools, which I think was awesome. But unfortunately, obviously, with the current situation, we weren't all able to do that. But if we can engage with them virtually, at least that's something that we can work with. I don't know if the sport has ever had an interruption like this. I, I did some research on it about a month ago just because I was curious about it. And in the past hundred years, I, I don't think that there's been a stoppage of play of sports except for world wars. During the Spanish influenza about a hundred years ago, that was during World War One, and I think World War One was the reason any sports stopped. Um, but we had a polio epidemic from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And what I saw there, sports leagues didn't stop. Maybe if a player on a specific team got polio, the team would not play for a couple of weeks. But as an organization, their leagues continued to play. All the sports, pro sports played. So this is a really unique situation. And my take on this is that no matter how long this this interruption happens. Hopefully we'll be playing again in the fall. But after an interruption like this, the fact that you're doing this with your coaching staff and that we have this big alumni base, I think that puts the Jayhawks in a better position to launch and come back than maybe anybody else around. Do you have anything to add to that observation? Yeah, I think, I think that's right, Steve, and that's, that's our job, right, as a club. This, this, yeah, I, I like the word interruption. I think it's a great word to use, and that's the way that we should treat it, right? Like, it's not, this is not a, a um, kicking stone situation. This is where, and again, when, I, when we were speaking with Matt initially, it's kind of like, let's try and make a positive out of a negative here and, and use this time to engage, albeit in a very different way, um, but also to set ourselves up for success. One thing I will say with rugby um, seasons is they tend to blend into each other, so you never really get a chance to sit down and, and reset and really think through, well, 
you know, how can how can we do better? What are all the one percenters that we're dropping by just being so busy caught up in the season? And then how can we prepare for when this thing, um, you know, when this competition ramps up again? So I think, um, you know, and there's some stuff with the USA Rugby that's obviously gone on, but as well, but I think, you know, as a rugby community, outside of the Jayhawks too, it's an awesome time for us all to, to reset and, and create a better system. Um, one thing that's been awesome as well is that um, Bill Sexton has been organising the uh, All the Heart of America um, conference coaches to be on calls once a week to discuss scheduling and um, conference and and that's really kept the coaches engaged which I think is really important as well so we're staying on the front foot with preparing for the full season um, which is awesome yeah and, and hopefully mate um, the work that we do off the ball now with these zoom meetings and um, uh, our player engagement prepares us as well as possible given the situation for next season well, great. Well, this has been about 15 minutes, and uh, that's probably the as long as anybody would like to listen to a podcast. So I'm going to I'm going to close down the podcast here. Thank you, Andy.